Hello everybody. Um, so I was really surprised that there are so few people, it's really hard to explain how few people are studying uh, the water situation. Um, we have so much uh, available to us. I was going to go down to my local stream today and just uh, start taking a look at the river that I have in my town. Um, and I wanted to kind of get uh, kind of a whole earth perspective of like what's going on uh, with the water situation. Um, and I hope this will be very helpful for you. Uh, so what I want to start by saying is that it's really extraordinary that we have a map like this available to us right now. Um, this is kind of the first time in history uh, that we can look at all this information. Um, so really, uh, it's not just me, it's really anyone out there uh, that can uh, study this. Um, and this is kind of like a first look uh, at everything here, and it's really unbelievable. So uh, first things is I wanted to start by looking at the United States, uh, but then I realized that uh, that's really part of the picture. And then, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of get into some really fun uh, and interesting areas, um, and particularly some of the more important regions where there is like a lot of population, um, as well as a huge need for water. So I'm going to go through really quickly uh, and just show you a bunch of really cool maps um, and then get into all the details so that you don't have to sit through and be on the internet and hopefully you can uh, try to find something fun uh, to look at no matter where you're located on the planet. So I'm located in out here in the United States, but really this is a picture about the entire planet um, and uh, Every little river uh, really can help out a lot. Um, if you think about it, uh, if you get just a tiny bit of uh, dirt in your water, you taste that and you can actually get sick from it. Uh, it can ruin the entire cup of water or even a huge amount of water. Um, so it only takes a little bit to make a huge problem. Um, and it's actually unbelievable that the water is as clean as it is uh, in some areas. I'm always surprised. Uh, I just got a huge thing of water here to drink while I'm working on this. Uh, and I took it out of my tap and it's unbelievable that it's pretty clean. The pipes rust from time to time, but it's still pretty clean. But this is a, a topological map of the planet. Uh, it really helps us see where the mountains are. And it's kind of unbelievable because the river systems uh, are actually pretty tiny here. Like there's just a few major rivers, as you can see. I have circled some of these areas. Uh, you can see the Mississippi River here, Amazon River here, Congo Jungle, uh, part of this other river heading down uh, to Argentina. Uh, and there's just so many rivers uh, around the world here. You can see up in Russia, there's quite a lot of rivers uh, as well. And then uh, you can also see in China, uh, and then you can see the significance of the rivers here in India. Uh, and so it actually is kind of uh, different than you might expect looking at a map like this. Um, you can see uh, that some of these areas are not all the same. Uh, some of them are very, I circled this area in particular because this is very, a lot of islands, uh, and there's very uh, difficult uh, just because of all the variety of animals. Uh, it's a whole different kind of water problem no matter where you are on the planet. So here's kind of circling more of these aquifers. It's just so much detail uh, in each one of these, but uh, we'll hopefully go back and I'll explain uh, why I circled all these different areas. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight a couple things that are really out there in terms of ideas. They're saying that there's going to be more plastic in the ocean than fish by 2050. Um, I was shocked to hear that. I just couldn't believe that we'd have more uh, waste in the ocean uh, than we might have fish. Um, and there's basically 8 million tons of plastic that ends up in the ocean every year. Um, and 90% uh, of that waste comes from just 10 rivers. So basically what this means is that we can study 10 rivers and get rid of 90% uh, of all that waste. Um, so uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple details uh, and then we're going to go back and I'm going to pause this and you can try to think and hopefully not 
uh, even close out the video and do something else with your night. Um, but uh, basically in the United States, there's a major river called the Mississippi River, um, and there's just all these towns uh, that I circled in red that are really critical. One thing that I didn't realize about the United States is actually the Great Lakes is one of the largest freshwater systems in the world. It actually dumps into Canada. It's not even really part of the United States. It's actually heads up north. Uh, so if you look at the aquifer here, you'll notice that Chicago uh, is actually one of the most important water cities in the world because it, uh, as well as Detroit, Michigan, Ontario, and uh, Toronto here. So these cities in here, and particularly even in Duluth, uh, Minnesota, and then there's another city up here uh, in Canada, but this water system is really critical and it's really surprising how much that is actually part of it. The problem starts in the United States but really ends in Canada. Uh, and so it's really, that, that's a weird thing that I didn't realize uh, about the water system. And then the other thing that you might not realize about the water system in the United States is that the Mississippi River actually goes really far out west. Um, it, uh, and, and there's basically there's basically two major uh, river systems uh, in the United States, and that's really the Columbia River and the Mississippi River. Um, but all these little towns I circled really need to be studied in great detail uh, and we'll go back to that uh, as we look around the world first. So in South America uh, there's actually a surprising uh, amount of influence in Argentina. I was shocked to find out that the uh, aquifer here actually drains mostly to Argentina. So even if you're in Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo, uh, that water actually ends up all the way down in Argentina. Uh, and then there's also a really important uh, area here in uh, essentially Bolivia and Peru uh, that a lot of people don't realize is super important as well as some frontier areas uh, in the Amazon jungle uh, that need to be looked at. So this is kind of a different map too to look at because uh, in the Caribbean uh, we don't really realize in the United States how important Texas is uh, but really the problem uh, with water pollution is actually in uh, the uh, Bahamas here because there's so many little islands uh, and actually these windward islands so we really need to be uh, cautious not it's actually even beyond beyond what we realize so basically the problem starts uh, you know with Mississippi River but also down here in Florida uh, and then there's just a really complex I wanted to kind of get into this in detail but if you study uh, the north part of the Amazon, Colombia here, uh, these aquifers here can be really studied in detail. There's actually a very difference, big difference between uh, Venezuela here and Colombia, but uh, you kind of have to study. Uh, it's really kind of scary at first when you start studying all this, the entire planet, you're just like, wow, there's so much to study. But um, if you dive into the details, uh, it'll all start to make really easy sense uh, and you'll be surprised uh, you know no matter where I'm talking about you might not have ever heard of some of these places uh, but you just look at the whole entire map of the planet and you're like oh yeah I know where that is uh, I kind of understand uh, how that fits with everything else on the planet so this really surprised me after I finished this uh, it's just perhaps a lot of chat GPT will tell you that the most important water problem is in India uh, but actually it's I disagree. I, I actually think it's in Africa. Um, what we see here um, is actually uh, because of the wildlife, right? So for humans, the, the most important problem is perhaps in India and in China uh, with the Yangtze River and the Ganges River. But the Great Lakes of Africa, there's just so much wildlife here uh, that basically this becomes the most important. And there's huge amounts of population as well. So you don't see that in the Amazon jungle. It's just not as... Uh, there's just not as many saving things. And actually, Nigeria is perhaps the other really important, like, it's even more, it's as, in, Nigeria probably should start working with Louisiana uh, and the Mississippi Delta because they're just so similar. Uh, and there's a lot of Africans uh, in Louisiana as well um, that would really love to actually go out to Nigeria and help. Um, and basically, this Delta here is just unbelievably important because it's, really helps us start to understand uh, the problem of both water and uh, high population as well as fast growth because this is basically the fastest growing place uh, in all of Africa and one of the fastest in the world. 
and I just circled different things here uh, to kind of highlight some details. There's just so much discussion going on. Uh, but uh, you can just see here's the start of the Nile. There's just so many things I wanted to talk about uh, that I don't know if I'm going to have time uh, just because I want to save people's time online. I don't want them sitting around listening to me. But uh, South Africa uh, is also super important uh, because uh, it's far from the jungle, but yet this is where a lot of people live. Uh, and may want to live in the future if we move them out of the jungle. So that's a hugely important topic. Uh, I didn't want to get into too much into Europe, but uh, I was really surprised at this piece here is that the largest river in Europe is actually not even in the part of Europe you'd think. It actually heads towards uh, the Black Sea and Caspian Sea. So uh, it's actually surprising because this Ukraine situation, the river systems here are much larger. Uh, they're actually very complicated and smaller uh, in most of Europe, uh, with the exception of maybe Amsterdam. So Amsterdam, the water problem is very important there, uh, as well as heading up into the hills in Switzerland. So people in Switzerland say, hey, we have clean water, and by the time it gets down to Amsterdam, it's very polluted. But the truth is, it really starts uh, in Switzerland. So that really is something to think about, um, even though they, they say, oh, everything's fine where we're at. Uh, downstream uh, a little bit of pollution can really cause a huge problem and then I wanted to highlight how important uh, Istanbul is because it's basically this major lake uh, which actually has a uh, really big uh, oxygen problem so there's just so little oxygen in the water here that all the fish have essentially died almost in the Mediterranean around the Black Sea and Caspian Sea and then also the Baltic Sea it's basically there's no fish left at all so you want to try to go fishing uh, good luck but uh, that's a huge question so in India and China uh, the surprising thing here is that uh, the story gets so complicated um, India actually has a has a fairly simple problem but yet they can't solve it for some reason just because of uh, the country borders so Bangladesh uh, basically, the way that this all started is that Bangladesh is a different country than India, so it, Bangladesh ends up having to deal with essentially all the water problems as it empties out in the ocean. But the story only gets more complicated when you get to Vietnam, uh, Laos, Cambodia, uh, and Thailand, because this heads out into the ocean, and really Hong Kong uh, and even Shanghai uh, really starts to get uh, important. So this is actually... It's perhaps even more important than the problem in Africa, but like, it's just hard. It, it's so important. It, even what I said earlier is probably not not the case, but basically, this is the most important water problem in the world because you have so many people. Uh, but it, and it also heads out into the deep ocean, which you'll see in a second here. So, I try to diagram this really carefully because this is where the fish live, and it's actually they're doing overfishing here, and I published some details showing. They're essentially just scraping the ocean here, and there's actually just no fish left because there's so much fishing going on. So as you look at the problems with uh, essentially Hong Kong and southern China, uh, a lot of that uh, China uh, and really uh, Laos and Cambodia and Thailand, uh, and then particularly Singapore. So, But I wanted to highlight uh, basically three or four major cities to really take a look at, and that's Manila. Uh, AI is kind of in agreement with me uh, that Manila and uh, Indonesia, but it didn't really mention Singapore, and Singapore is a major port here. Uh, you'll see a lot of boat traffic here, uh, as well as Hong Kong, uh, because it's one of the largest cities in the world. So basically, uh, what I didn't diagram here is how important this uh, river system is right in here. So basically, this heads out into... Uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So this uh, river system basically starts in Laos and Cambodia and then empties out here. And then by the time it gets here, it starts to be important because it heads out into uh, Southeast Asia. And there's just so many details uh, to discuss here. Um, and uh, I'll leave some of that uh, for a later discussion. Surprising thing about China is actually there's kind of a weird thing because there's different types of fish that live in cold water than live in warm water. And actually, China is really part of the colder water system. It's actually quite cold in a lot of parts of China. Uh, a lot of the farming up here in the north, uh, it's surprising how cold uh, most of China, 
most of the people that live in China are actually not living in southern China near Hong Kong. Um, <coughs> they're actually living near Shanghai uh, and Beijing, which actually does get quite cold. And this becomes <coughs> this bay here is one of the most important bays in the world because there's just so much fishing going on. Then it heads out into Japan and then gets up into the Arctic. Give me one second here. So, really, what I'm suggesting here is that <coughs> Russia, which is a topic we didn't even discuss uh, in this whole conversation, really, China uh, has a huge role to play. It, surprisingly, India is further south. Uh, it's warm all throughout India, but in China, it's just different. And because its uh, relationship with Korea, Japan, um, but then there's just so many Asians also in Southeast Asia. It, it really makes it a complex picture, but in general, as you head north, uh, China basically becomes more a part of the Arctic than a lot of people realize, and as well as in Australia, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Australia, because of the coral reefs, um, and basically so much connected with Southeast Asia, this is actually, um, this is part down here is Australia, right? And if you look at the map, uh, let me get you back here. Basically, this Australia, although it does kind of head down here south, even to Antarctica, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, the river system here um, actually has to both with Southeast Asia as well as Antarctica uh, and even the North Pole. So uh, potentially, if this is the capital of the North Pole someday. So this river system is actually... Uh, suggested as one of the most important river systems in the world um, as well. So anyway, I'm going to pause right now, uh, but I hope uh, this has helped you uh, understand uh, quite a lot right now. You've just gone through uh, basically all the major rivers around the